The tradition of the landscape painting goes way back, probably beginning with the tinted walls of the ancient Greeks. The landscape was revived years later when Leonardo da Vinci chose to paint his portraits against the backdrop of the landscape, even though his subjects sat in his studio. The famous painting of Mona Lisa was done inside, but da Vinci chose to paint her likeness against a landscape. A beautiful, easy, and ephemeral expression of a landscape is made using a little trick from the Rorschach print. Paint and powdered pigments are transferred from one side of a folded piece of paper to the other. Talk about an easy way to explain the horizon line. After the print is made, additional detail is added using markers or any other media. This project easily spans grade levels from K through 12 with a few minor tweaks. And I'd like to start first with the easiest example for students who might be as young as five or six. I'm just folding a piece of basic Blick watercolor paper in half. And either axis will work for the fold. I'm going to use the horizontal. Um, so now I have tissue paper that is bleeding tissue paper. It intentionally will bleed the pigment. So I'm just tearing the tissue and thinking about uh, landscape elements. So I'm going to keep all of these pieces above the fold on my paper. I'm thinking of shapes like clouds or mountains, and I'm just going to lay them down. And once I kind of have them the way I want them, I'm just going to move them off the page. And this is just water in a spritzer bottle. I'm just going to slightly dampen my paper with the spritzer. Another fun thing for the young, younger ones. And I'm just going to now just position my tissue. I want to stay on top of the fold of the paper here. I don't think I'm putting it back exactly the way I had it down, but that's OK. OK, now I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a mist. I don't want it to be soggy or runny, but I do want to get everything kind of dampened. Now I'm just going to fold my paper and I'm going to apply even pressure all over the sheet. Just give it a second to soak in. Okay, now I'm just going to open this up and remove this tissue. And I have a symmetrical print on the bottom half of the paper. And this is another easy way to explain the term symmetry. I find that this often ends up looking like reflections of a landscape in the water. And when this is dry, the younger student could use crayons or markers to create a scene on their landscape. Instead of um, bleeding tissue paper, a basic tempera paint could also be used to make the print. So now I want to move on to the slightly more sophisticated version of this process. This is a little bit heavier paper. This is Blick Studio Watercolor Paper by Fabriano. I'm also going to fold on the horizontal on this one. But this time I'm going to put down a coat of clear gesso onto the paper. This will seal the paper and it will make a really neat effect later that I will show you. I'm just going to drizzle that onto my page and I've got a large brush just to make this kind of quick and easy. So I'm just going to coat both sides of the paper with this clear gesso. Don't have to be fussy about it. It doesn't have to go all the way to the edges or be perfect. So now I'm just going to grab um, a small brush and some acrylic paint and paint on some landscape colors above the fold. You can really use you know, any type of paint for this. I've got a little bit of a metallic gold that I will put down here. I'm thinking grasses along the edge of a hill. Of course, I want to use some blue in the sky. Now, another thing that I would like to add to this process 
are some powdered pigments. Um, they are just fun to add a little bit of texture. These are Pearlex pigments. They're non-toxic. You can just kind of sprinkle them where you want them and that, that gesso, that clear gesso is going to hang on to that pigments. Okay, and so just as in the first one, I'm going to fold it over. And apply even pressure. Okay, so I'm getting a little messy. That's okay. <laughs> and again, I've got a beautiful kind of atmospheric landscape there. So it'd be very easy to go in once this version is dry and add details with marker or ink or whatever. If the landscape is a water scene, just be sure to mimic the reflections of any details that are laid down on that top section. I hope you'll try an easy but sophisticated abstract press landscape. It can result in a very fresh and immediate painting, either for brand new artists or those who've been at it for a while. For a list of the materials used in this lesson plan, please visit dickflick.com.